I am a residential school survivor. I, I was taken from my family and I, where I lost my language, my culture, my spirituality. My, there's no one in the world knows my dialect of Hakumelum. The, the last one died with my uncle, Patrick George. For my whole life, I'm a grandmother, a great-grandmother, and for some time in my life, I hoped for some justice for my people. I always wish that, that somewhere, somehow, before I die, that I'd have some justice towards myself and my people. I grew up on Brard Inlet. Tislewit too, that's the name of the inlet. I grew up there, and that water was always important to me. I had one counselor when I was getting healthy from my residential school experience, and she said the water was my mother, because I spent so many of my summer days in that water. The name Tislewit too means the people of the inlet. At least three times a week, we'd have food from that inlet. We'd go down and we'd get crabs and clams. My dad had a bucket permanently left on the beach and he'd walk out in the mud flats and get crabs and then he'd stack clams around the edge of the fire and we'd just sit there and we'd eat. And we took water from the inlet. We'd build rafts and we'd go way out and we could see crabs walking on the bottom. Now there's no more, no more seaweed, no more crabs, no more meals from that inlet that been intimately a part of my life. And all, when I, there's so many, we're a small nation now because we almost got completely wiped out by intentional or unintentional. Our lives were taken by the first, first um, nations that came here from Europe. So the, most of my people are on the other side. And when I see all you ones gathered here, you seem to take their place. That You stand there and you say, I'll stand behind you for some justice for the people. And you take, uh, you t this, these are the lands where my people used to walk. They said it's always probable that you're going to be in touch with us because my, there's, my people are buried here. My people walked here. They lived here. They're in that water. How many years have we had canoe races there where we took our meals and where we swam? It's been a spiritual part of our lives. We always do cold winter baths. We always had something to do with the water, our canoe pulling. We'd have war canoe races. I'm really happy for persons like them and Rex and the wilderness people and all you ones who are willing to stand up and say no. I have nightmares. I had nightmare, a nightmare just the other week. I walked to the, my kitchen door and I looked out and I couldn't see anything. The fog was so thick. Then I looked across the bay, and then when the when the fog started going lower and lower, I saw the big mass of that ship, and it was turning over, and it was spilling oil, and the oil was coming towards the shore. And I I woke up, and I was so horrified, and I had to go tell my son, my chief, Chief Yopin, I had to tell him. I said, I saw that ship turned over and all the oil was coming towards us. If that happens, you get throat disease, eye disease, stomach disease, cancer. All the fish will die. I saw a film where they had, where they had the tar sands and they're pulling a dead bear out of the water. I've always been close to uh, birds all my life. And the birds didn't know the difference. They'd go and they'd land. And then their, their, um, their wings are all oily. 
every single time we go into ceremony, we say, all my relations, that doesn't mean my son and my children and my parents. That means every living thing, the standing family, the trees, the birds, they're all our relations. We're not just here as human beings, we're here to share this earth and have consideration for the ones that swim, the ones that fly. Every single species that get, goes extinct that's closer to us, it's closer to us. And it's time to start saying no, because there's only a top, I would say, some people say more, but I'd say 1% of the people are benefiting while murdering all life. Mm. Not just, we're not, I'm not standing here talking for human beings, I'm talking for bears and cougars and wolves and birds. I love the birds. Oh. I know that Harper's over talking with China, but do they know what is going on here? What is happening in these waters? I don't think so. It's up to us to let the world know. Let him know. Let him know that this is what we're against. We're against this. There's always a saying, all through the years, when we were standing up for the trees, when the trees were coming down, We'd go and we'd block it. They'd always send the old, wo older women, the elders, out first. And they said that there goes the Indian stopping progress again. And yet it's not stopping progress. It's just the top 1% who are filling up their bank accounts. How much more billions do they want? When they, my dad used to say, when you go into the ground, you're not going to say, did you have a big house? Did you have a big car? Did you have a big bank account? They're going to say, did you love? Not just your intimate family, but everything. Everything lives. Everything that Mother Earth is alive. And Mother Earth is being abused. Her water's being abused. It's time. It's time now to listen to our voices. We're not blocking progress. We're talking for life. We're talking for living things. It hurts me so bad when I see those big... They were pounding under second arrows. They were trying to dredge so they could even big, bring in bigger tankers. And it just like, it frees my heart and it hurts me for all the fish life that used to come up the inlet, all the food we used to get out of there. Like I said in the beginning, I really want... I really want some justice in my life. I was put in concentration camp for being native when I was six years old and I stayed in residential school where I was physical, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and sexually abused. And it took me many years to get where I am, to be healthy enough to stand up and say, this is what happened to me. I really, really want to see some justice. I don't want them tankers to spill and kill everything, kill everything, including, including the fish and the animals and the people. When my, my father was, name is Tetswano, his name is Dilat Stin, but he's known to the world as Chief Dan George. When he passed away, we, the family, gave uh, his his Sion, his spirit song, it's his spirit singing. He gave us, he gave the, his spirit song to the people of the Coast Salish. I want to end my time with you with his song that he gave to us. Did someone have a drum? Thank you. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Thank you.